Jody. It's Mary Jo. And thank you so much for having us here today. Thank you for coming, I Mary Jo. I love your woman cave. Thank you so much. I love it, too. I'm surrounded by family and license plates. Oh, that's true. <laughs> How did you get into license plates? Well, I ran to a friend's house one day down here in southern Vermont, and I saw the shape of Vermont made in license plates on her wall, and, um, and I thought I could make that. That would be cool. I can make that. Okay. Okay. And where do you get the license plates? Well, should I tell you the truth or should I tell you the joke that I tell everybody? Oh, tell us the joke. So I usually tell everybody I get them at uh, in parking lot one <laughs> up at Stratton. <laughs> but the truth is? The truth is, is that um, I, at this point in my search for license plates, I know people really throughout the state and some over the line in New Hampshire, um, used car dealerships, uh, car uh, auto mechanic places and um, online I get some. And the, the various departments of motor vehicles don't mind that, that you're using their um, license plates for art? They do not. They okay. do not. Um, there are some states that require you sending states ba uh, plates back, but I don't have those plates. Okay. So. All right. <laughs> So tell me, how did you, you saw this at a friend's house, you said, I can do that. How did you start? Well, that was funny because I had no idea how to, um, how to come up with making the state of Vermont so big. Like, so I, I, I taped a bunch of pieces of cardboard together. I had my three children draw me a picture of Vermont. And uh, then I brought the three pieces of cardboard to work with me one day. And I said, which one looks best like Vermont? With the little thing here, the way it came out here. And all of the girls that I worked with voted. Okay. Um, which one looked the most like Vermont? And, uh, and we went with that one. And then I went to the store and I got a piece of thin wood and had to go to a carpenter friend because I didn't have a saw. Had him cut it out for me. And, well, and But now you cut them out yourself, right? Yeah, since then. That was the first, that was the first one I ever and, made. And how did you learn how to manage the saw and, and you know, follow the, the diagram? Well, I, I self-taught. Like, I just, you know, I've... People have given me ideas. They've said, can you make a bear? I didn't think, I, oh, I'll make a bear. I started with the state shape of Vermont, and that was it, this big one. Okay. Somebody once said to me, what do you do with the rest of the wood? I'm like, well, I burn it. He <laughs> said, it's kindling. Why don't you make small shapes? So I make small shapes of Vermont as well. So I started with those two, and then somebody said, can you make a bear? And I said, I think so. So I drew a bear, and I cut a bear out. And it's gone from there, and I've made... I can make literally any shape now, and um, and so I did shapes. And then somebody said, "What about writing words?" And I thought, ah. "Oh, how would how would I do? I didn't know how I'd do that actually, because at that point I just had green plates and I couldn't get all of the letters um, for words. And then I realized I needed to get other plates from different states. Okay. So I could and when you have do variety. Words, what and do you do? So I take a plate and it has, some of them have letters, some of them have numbers, um, and I cut them. I originally, when I first started doing it, I had these <laughs> and a plate and I would use, and I would draw a line and I would cut each one. And it's not easy to cut these. I mean, I cut right. them now when I do the shapes, but it's not easy to cut them in a straight line with these, um, with anything. Really, I found. Okay. So I would, my, my um, oldest son would come home from school and I'd ask him to cut a couple plates for me. And I'd get a couple plates done a day because it hurt. Like, I was going to say, you're going to must have and, some bicep <laughs> and forearm there. And uh, eventually I came upon this right here. And it's kind of, I explain it as an old fashioned um, paper cutter. Super duper paper but cutter. It, but it cuts metal. Okay. I believe it was made, it's made for um, sheet metal for roofs, oh, I think. Interesting. I'm not okay. actually sure, but okay. I don't, I use it for license plates. So it just literally does this and I slide the plate in, you know, and I line it up at the top and I come out with, I line it up nice, nice and come out with what I need. So, yeah, so I just do this and I, then I cut them all out and I had a friend build me this box here so I could keep them all, all the letters in alphabetical order. Oh, and um, yeah, and I put them all there, and then I put all the things together. I've got a, I have quite a system now. I didn't have it in the past, and I have this coming down with attached to my 
nail gun. And that's what this is over here uh, with these words here. So I'll put it all together and I'll line them up straight and, you know, bang, bang, bang. And they bang. just go on a straight piece of two by four? They go on a, uh, <laughs> it's a one by, I, I, go to, okay. I go to, yeah, I go to RK Miles and he just, they know what I need. Okay. Um, and yeah, so I'll, I'll buy the wood and stain it and then I'll put a bunch of words on it and then I cut, cut it. Then I use my saw, which is here somewhere, and okay. I cut in between each word, and I sand the ends. So what is the aesthetic when you put something like this together? How do you decide what goes where and what colors go with each other? So, well, for something, for something like this, you know, we had, there's a couple of different ways to do something like this, and it depends on who you are and how you like it. I like to sell something to people that I think looks good. Um, so, you know, not everybody feels the same about things, but I think, I think one of the neatest things about making this the big Vermont is that you can use, I have nine plates on this, so I actually could use nine different decades, like nine different looking plates for one piece. And I can use one from, you know, like this is 2022, that's, this is 1959, this is 1960. You know, this one is a, for a truck, so it's different than our normal plates. This one is from 1980. This was the plate that says Green Mountains across the top. Um, we have so many different plates in Vermont um, that it makes it, I think, look really neat to be able to show that over the years. Um, some people have been like, oh my gosh, they want to, do you have a plate from 19 whatever, their birth year, and I'll put a plate on, and they're really impressed by that. Some people say, I want all green, brand new looking plates, okay. you know, like the ones we have on our cars right. now. So I'll make one that's all bright green. And, um, and so I, even when I started this project here, this bear, I, w I don't know if you noticed, but I w I'm going to cut it like this. And I'm going to do them on a slant because okay, cool. sometimes it looks really cute it's, if it's slanted. Mm -hmm. um, there's some people that like, oh my gosh, it needs to be straight. So <laughs> I'll so, ask the people sometimes because I have a couple of different ways I think it looks good, but okay. you know. How do you get orders for this? I mean, do you sell commercially or do you just do it you know, custom work for by request for customers? So um, I have my pro I have the product in a few different stores in Southern Vermont. Um, I have. Um, do you want me to tell you where they are? Sure. I have them at H N Williams down in Dorset, and I have them at. Um, the Winhall Market and the Bromley Market, and above all, uh, above all Vermont mm -hmm. in Vermont, uh, I mean in Manchester, and there's a store up in um, Burlington on Church Street called Keep Vermont Weird, and they sell the stuff up there. Okay. So I sell some things, you know, through that obviously. Oh, and um, also the silver, the Silver Spoon Gallery, Depot Street Gallery in Ludlow. Okay. They had they have a um, a lot of my things there. And in fact. When I first got my things put up over there, they, one of these was hanging on the wall next to Woody Jackson, a picture of Woody wow. Jackson, the cows that he had drawn. Keeping very good company. <laughs> I thought to myself, oh my gosh, that almost makes me an artist. It does. So well, that was, <laughs> that was when you it, brought that That up. was when I was like, well, that's really, are you the license plate artist? And I thought, I think I am. Yeah. So, so it's you don't cool. think of yourself as an artist? Do you think of yourself as a craftsperson? Probably a craftsperson. Okay. And what do you, you think know. the difference is? I don't know. I don't. I mean, I I've loved, I love arts and crafts. I've loved arts, arts and crafts since I was little. I, my children grew up with paintings on the wall and, you know, the alphabet made out of noodles and string and everything else, like arts and crafts. Like, mm -hmm. And I always thought at one point in my life I might be a... Um, an art teacher, like in an elementary school. Oh, you'd be just, perfect for that. So, just to, but, so this is, I, it's more of a craft to me. Okay. You know, and I do understand why people think it's an, it's, it is art when it's hanging on the wall. So I do well, understand. I think of an art gallery hung you next to Woody Jackson. You are an artist. I, I think, so Jody, you put so much of yourself into these pieces. How does it make you feel when you have a piece complete for a customer? Sometimes I'm shocked to think that people are going to hang up something I made on their wall <laughs> and look at it all the time. And, um, and it has my card on the back and the first probably hundred things that I made, I actually put my initial on and a date. And um, I, I just think that's, it's somewhat, 
it's this is, might sound strange, but um, one of my children said has said to me, "Mama, everybody passes away, and people have statues made of them, you know, and like what happens to all the people that are just like normal people? They leave very little behind." <laughs> And he said they all get yeah. forgotten. And it's so bizarre to me that I think of these. I really do. Of yourself? I'm like, these are going to be some of these pieces. This should be on somebody's wall and it should be hung, handed down. For, and I'm like, that's going to be hanging on somebody's wall long after I'm gone. And I get, I find that very um, intense, sort of, that I've, I've, I've actually in the last. 10 years of my life created things that people are going to have long after I'm gone. I think it's not a book, it's not a record, it's not a song, but it is something hanging on a wall. So Jody, thank you so much for having us here today. This is just fascinating to see what you do with license plates, which quite honestly would might be considered somebody's garbage. You're making into art pieces. Well, thank you so much. It is if you know people have these things in their garage on shelves and uh, and they can be turned into pieces that can be brought into the house and hung on the wall. Well, thank you. So, thank like you for having me. That creative eye. Thank you. Thank you.